Today we're going to take a quick look at a rock. This one's from Pennsylvania. This is a metamorphic rock. What we've done is we've taken a, a field sample rock, um, sliced it open, taken a small portion of it, and mounted it so that we can see what was inside the rock. Um, we've polished that carefully so that it will work well in this SEM. And now we've loaded that in and you're seeing an image of the surface of that cut and polished rock. This is, as I said, a metamorphic rock, which means it's undergone changes from its original composition due to fluid moving through the rock, due to changes in temperature, and changes in pressure. This rock was originally what was known as an ultramafic rock, rich in elements such as magnesium and iron, um, but also very rich, as most rocks in the crust are, in silicon and oxygen. This is a portion of the rock where you can see in the display a great deal of visual contrast. Um, when you look at the sample in hand sample, you can see these metallic, um, in many cases, diamond-shaped minerals. Here you can see it's not quite diamond-shaped. Um, we've allowed the um, brightness and contrast to automatically select, and it's in focus. So we've brought up um, the same image on this monitor now so that we can do a chemical analysis. Um, if you could use this mouse, click out here in this darker gray field. We're looking at what's called a backscatter electron image. Um, this is interesting because the atomic number of the material, the average atomic number of the material, determines how much of the electrons get bounced back up to the detector. That means, in essence, that substances that have heavier materials in it, heavier elements, will appear brighter. And ones with less heavy elements will appear darker. So we're going to look at the dark one and look what it's largely consisting of. You can see the computer giving you a, its estimate of what elements may be present. Um, lots of oxygen. The Earth's crust is more than half oxygen, so that's entirely probable. You've got a good amount of magnesium, a fair amount of silicon, and a tiny bit of iron. This is an altered mineral that probably once was an olivine. Um, you can't see the hydrogen that's present in it. Um, it has actually a fair amount of water in it, but you can't see that under this, on this machine. Uh, now let's go look at the bright, take an, uh, a sample right in the middle of that bright area. Yep, give that a go and see what we get. So if we want to, we can click back on that first um, sample here and look at the elements and then look at the second sample and what is what difference in elements do you see between them mm. Why don't, yeah. what, what big difference do you see between them there's a lot of oxygen mm -hmm. in this one yep and in the second one i think there's more iron we have iron here right that's a very iron-rich phase. That's actually an iron oxide phase. Um, and let's, let's, put, let's click on number two again. So depending on the ratio of iron to oxygen, you might call this either hematite or magnetite. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically, it's just oxidized iron, the same as you would find if you left out a piece of metal and it oxidized. So you have a chemistry background. This is very much what oxidation of a, of a metal would look like. Um, you can see that it also is picking up very small amounts of magnesium and a very, very, very tiny amount of silicon. So one thing we're, and, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention, what else is present in this? Uh, chromium. chromium, right. And in fact, you probably might even call, have called this a chromite or some a similar term. Uh, it's really an alloy of iron and chromium that's been oxidized is how a chemist might think of this. Now. One fun thing I want to do is go back to the right monitor, and we're actually going to play around a little bit. Um, we're going to go away from the automated settings, and we're going to zoom in. Focus. Okay. Um, now we're going to play around. We're going to take just the contrast and turn it way up. And now we're going to take the brightness and turn it way down. 
and we're going to see what we see. So now, what do you, can you describe the image for me? Um, it has little holes mm -hmm. uh, in the black background. Mm -hmm. Spongy. Yeah, so what we've done is we've altered the contrast and the brightness so that we can no longer see that more silicon rich mineral phase. We're really just focusing on the oxide and we've adjusted the brightness and the contrast so that you can see it's, no long, it's not really one oxide. You actually have a discrete boundary here between this solid phase and as you described it, this spongy phase. And there's even a second boundary here where you can see a more spongy effect. Now, if you go to the left screen, click on the first image in the row. Um, that's, I did this before, and I chose three spots to analyze. One out here, one in the spongy area, and one in the core. So if you look at the chemistry, you can see, again, um, a lot of oxygen, a decent amount of silicon. Here, we're getting that lots of iron, a little bit of oxygen. And if you look at number three, there's your chromium again. So this is the phase you initially analyzed. Um, this phase you initially analyzed, and this, because we carefully went in and used the machine and that attribute of the backscatter electron detector that is sensitive in imaging to differences in atomic weight or atomic number, to actually show you that there is more than one phase present. So where's the chromium the highest? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so if you can click on number two, what does the chromium look like there? is really very little. And on number one, right, there's just a trace. What you're seeing is a chemical reaction, okay? When this initially formed, you would have had this oxide, rich in chromium, iron, and oxygen, okay? Stable, sitting next to this silicate phase, most likely an olivine. During metamorphosis, though, you gave it time, temperature, changes in pressure, and fluids moving through the rock that allowed chemical reactions to happen. And so what we've done now is we've actually reacted the oxide phase with the silicate phase. And what we're doing is we're converting the oxide phase here into something new. And you're actually slowly seeing a chemical reaction take place in the solid state, although there's a small amount of fluids present that might be aiding it. But this is actually a solid state reaction. It is a chemical reaction within a solid changing from one to another. But it's the same as every other chemical reaction you studied in chemistry class. And what you're seeing is that this oxide is actually reacting and turning into a new phase. And so this is, in geology, we call this metamorphism, change due to temperature, pressure, or fluids. Um, in chemistry, you would think of it as a chemical reaction. One more thing I want to quickly note it. If you can switch to the second screen next to acquisition, okay, it's because it's a chance to actually look at the energy spectra. This is what's actually being detected in the x-ray detector. The electron beam bombards the sample and as a happy byproduct produces x-rays that are characteristic of the elements present. Um, let's choose point number three. Okay, and you can see that the computer's attempt has identified an iron phase, a chromium phase. Um, can I borrow the mouse for just a moment, please? Thank you. What we're going to do is we're going to zoom in and just look at this for a second. So you can see here this sort of bumpy area. This is what's called the background. I've also imaged this in a slightly different setting. This setting um, has three, t uh, I believe, about 10 times the current. So it's sending more electrons down, which means we get more x-rays out. And the reason we do that is you can see how bumpy this is here, right? Um, we smooth that out. We have more data, and that reduces what's called noise. And you can actually start to see there is actually another peak here. And so with more um, uh, counting time and with more um, electrons, you are actually better able to see things that are present in small amounts. So one of the things to remember when we're doing analysis is that you want to have as much current as we can do. And you also might want to consider the amount of counting time. Because here, you can see it's actually um, in, this is a carbon-coated sample, so that's why it's detecting carbon. Um, but it actually will do a more precise job and can be capable of finding, there's no nitrogen there, um, other elements present. And so when you're doing 
your um, studies of chemistry, especially if you're looking for things in small amounts, you're going to want to set the machine to have the highest current, and you're also going to want to, we can change this to count longer. Okay? But again, what we wanted to see here today is an example of a solid state chemical reaction that you can see in a rock which is actually local to us. So thank you for your help.